When it comes to switching from Windows to Linux, then one of the most common questions is if a certain program will work. Many are scared that they will have a lesser experience on the Linux desktop, but that might not be the case at all. As someone who has been daily driving Linux for more than two years by now, I thought I'd give you some insight into the programs I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Starting from making my YouTube videos, configuring my peripherals, browse the web and of course gaming. Oh, and I should also mention that you should be able to find all of the mentioned tools in your distro software store. Right, so why don't we start off with a basic thing. If you are a content creator on YouTube, a streamer on Twitch, or you just want to record your desktop in a very high quality, then my personal and recommended choice is the Open Broadcaster Software Studio, also known as OBS. Many of you probably know this program and it's natively supported on Linux. You can create scenes, overlays and even use it for modifying your webcam, which you can then use in various web conferencing tools. Even though many Linux desktop environments also come with an inbuilt screen recorder, OBS is the one that I personally like the most. Let's move on to a program that I need to use at least once per week. A video editing program. While many Windows users tend towards Adobe solutions, I personally have always been a fan of DaVinci Resolve, which is luckily also natively supported on Linux. It does have some quirks, as it's really only built for one single distribution and doesn't support all of the codecs on Linux. But I honestly just record my videos in a different format now, which as it turns out works even faster in the editing process due to less decoding. With that out of the way, it's essentially the same experience that I had on Windows. I can even import third-party templates, which is awesome. One thing that is kind of weird is that you will have a better experience if you have an NVIDIA GPU due to hardware acceleration, especially with the Studio Edition. But then again, I'm on AMD and have had no performance problems so far. When re-watching my videos or just, you know, watch others like from my phone, DVD or whatever else, I like to use the VLC Media Player. It's a rather dated looking program, which is also available on Windows, but it has incredible video and audio codec support. You know like on Windows, you now need to buy some codecs to view them, but not with VLC. For my thumbnails or editing some images for my videos, I use the image manipulation program GIMP. Now I should mention that I've always used GIMP instead of Photoshop and many claim that it's not really a substitute for it. I somewhat disagree on this. For professionals or even advanced amateurs, then I agree, there is no real substitute for Photoshop. It offers a ton of templates and features that are either not implemented in GIMP at all or you need to create the effects on your own. But for most people who are just cutting out some images or do some slight editing, GIMP is more than enough. And for drawings, you use a different vectorization program anyway. You know, like Inkscape or a hybrid like Krydon. Alright, enough about making videos. Let's talk about gaming and Windows programs. With the Steam Deck and Steam consoles, it's of course not surprising that Steam is natively supported on Linux. And once you activate Proton in the Steam compatibility settings, you can also play Windows games on it. There are a couple of games that don't work yet due to a lack of anti-cheat support, but most games work just fine, even some with sad anti-cheats. Gaming on Linux is not fiction or something that is hard to get working anymore. On Steam it's literally just one toggle in the settings. And as a tip, I also like to disable preloading shader caches, as Steam downloads updated sets quite often and Linux can generate them very efficiently on the fly nowadays, just like Windows can. For non-Steam games I currently use Bottles, whereas you can create several Windows environments that won't interact with one another. This is incredibly useful for separating notorious dumb programs like the Rockstar Games Launcher, which at some point started deleting my whole drive back on Windows. You can also install many Windows applications, create application shortcuts and also pin them into Steam, which is especially useful on a device like the Steam Deck. And to be real with you, the setup is really easy. Create a bottle, choose a template for what you want to run and then you either select a program from a pre-selected application list or you install it with a setup file like you would on Windows. Bottles is awesome. For communication, Discord. Yeah, I just use Discord and occasionally also Telegram, which both have a native Linux client. 
There used to be some issues where as you couldn't share your screen with a new display protocol called Wayland, but this is mostly not the case anymore. And there are workarounds in place that are usually installed by default on the most common distros. The actual experience is completely identical to Windows nowadays. But what about apps that don't have a native client? Like WhatsApp? Well, before we get into that, let's quickly detour to browsers. You'll shortly see why. Google Chrome, Firefox, Brave, Opera, and yes, even Microsoft Edge for some reason, all of them support Linux. My two to-go browsers are Firefox and Brave. Why Brave? Well, in my particular case, it's more privacy-oriented, but since it also has a Chromium base, I can install progressive web apps out of the box. Now, since I have YouTube Premium and don't want to pay for Spotify, which by the way also has a native Linux client, I just use YouTube Music instead, which I just installed to my system. And now circling back to apps that don't work natively on Linux, also installed WhatsApp. In the particular case of WhatsApp, I can't make calls for some reason, since they don't want to support the browser version, but it's a one-time thing. Technically speaking, you can either install apps via the advertised button if a website offers it, or you create a shortcut and launch it as a window, which from a usability perspective is essentially the same thing. Back when I was still studying, I installed MS Teams that way, since the native client lagged a bit behind, and I really like having dedicated apps sometimes. Alright, so what else is there? Right, so configuring my mouse was interesting for a while. Logitech G-Hub does not support Linux yet, and you can't run it with wine or bottles because it relies on some deeply integrated Windows dependencies that would just be unnecessary for most other programs. So what I use for my Logitech gear is Piper. And honestly, it's much faster and in my opinion even cleaner than G-Hub. Plus it doesn't need to update every time I use it, like once per year. If you have a different mouse, then I made a whole video about configuring peripherals on Linux, so make sure to check it out. Let's move on to programming, which is something that Linux is actually known for. Now, I don't do as much programming as I used to, and despite others' opinions, my favorite go-to text editor is Visual Studio Code, which you guessed it, does have its own Linux port. There are actually quite a lot of others that also have one. As I'm currently on KDE Plasma, I also need a calendar app, since I like getting notifications on my desktop, but also synchronize them to the cloud. I chose to go for Mercuro, which is not only a more modern approach to a calendar in contrast to some of the, well, yeah, but it can also sync a lot of different providers. On GNOME, ergo on my Microsoft Surface, I just use the inbuilt calendar with the GNOME accounts integration. And yeah, that's basically it. There are of course more applications and games that I have installed, and I should also mention that mods in games are not that big of a deal anymore. For Windows games you usually just need to adjust the case sensitivity, as Linux or essentially all untwigged Unix based systems are case sensitive. I am hopefully leaving some links in the video description down below, so make sure to check them out. Switching to Linux was not that big of a deal for me, since I've already been using a lot of programs that are natively supported on it, but it of course wasn't without its hiccups. Before I knew of Piper, I didn't have a way to save my mouse configuration to its onboard storage, and some things needed some time to develop, but I would dare to say that Linux is in a great spot nowadays. Is it for everyone? Well, probably not, especially if you need a certain set of applications that just don't work on it. On the other hand, many programs can still be run via compatibility layers. And for most people, these things are irrelevant anyway. I just wanted an operating system that works, doesn't annoy me with ads or updates if I don't want to, and still allows me to play games and use my computer in the way that I want. Linux provides this for me, and maybe for you too. Give it a shot and see how it goes. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to also subscribe to the channel as well. I'm also curious what programs you like to use, so let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.